Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to my shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. It's uh, nearing Christmas time and so I'm in the shop making a few presents. I'm going to make a couple camp knives or general purpose knives. Um, one's going to be just slightly longer than the other um, just to lend it a little better for hunting. This one's going to be for my son-in-law and this one is for a neighbor who's asked me to make one for her husband. This is 80 CRV2 steel. I bought, I bought this from alphaknifesupply.com. They're a um, pretty good company, I would recommend them. So first things first, we're gonna get cracking on um, cutting this silhouette out. This is mostly stock removal. I'll use the forge for um, hardening it, and then I'll use the oven to um, temper the knives. So let's get started. <music> I've got a 50 pound weight here. I keep this weight near the welding area because sometimes I like to cantilever my steel out over the table and do things like cutting and sometimes even welding out here. So uh, if you have big heavy weights, I would highly recommend something like this. In the shop, it really does come in handy. I've got it grounded. I've got a fine tip on my Hypertherm um, 30XP. So we're gonna try to cut this nice and slow and see if I can't get pretty close to what I've got here. Now that we've got it plasma cut, let's refine the profile of both of these knives. We're going to do that on this uh, 2x72 grinder. I've got some gloves, I've got a mask, I've got safety goggles, I'm also going to put something on for hearing protection. So this is going to take a little bit just to refine the profile. <laughs> Okay guys, the profile is set, so now we're going to cut out right here. You can see where I've just used a little bit of a sharpie to kind of give me the idea of what I'm trying to do. I'll round those out just a little bit better with a file. I'll use a cutoff wheel on a 4 inch grinder initially just to get the bulk of that material out of there. comes time to grind so I use a jig to grind guys on my belt sander I actually use a small jig and essentially what it does is it gives me a bunch of holes down here that I can put in and then and I just welded this up it's just a, a simple tension fit you just slide it in there and um, and it'll do everything you need it to do. And then I just run her back and forth. Simple as that. So we're going to do that now. strike a line down the, the center so that I would grind somewhat equally on both sides. It's not perfect, but it's um, pretty darn close. So, so now um, it's ready for drilling. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll drill a couple holes here for our handle pins. I like to use brass pins if I can. And so uh, we'll put a couple holes in each of these, quarter inch, and we'll have a quarter inch uh, brass pin to go in there. Here's the rough grind. Well guys, now that we've got a uh, couple holes drilled in for the pins, and we've got a rough grind on the knives, it's time to fire up the forge. I will video everything but what I'll end up doing is I'll take it to critical temp maybe maybe just under that and I'll put my touch mark on it I usually put my touch mark right in the center of the blade up here and once I've done that then I'll go through the normalization process so I'll normalize it three times and then I'll actually harden it um, once I've um, completed normalizing then I'll take it to the oven and we'll temper it there. So first things first, let's get the forge fired up, get a nice heat going, and then uh, we can put our touch mark on there. Okay guys, <clears throat> now that we've heat treated them, and now they've just come out of the tempering oven, they did two hours at 400 degrees, cooled to room temperature, and then two hours at 400 degrees again. So that's the tempering for uh, ADCRV2. And I've, you'll see I've made an extra one here because I ended up burning one in the forge. And so rather, it wasn't destroyed completely. It just got a little bit of um, a little bit of burning on the um, spine of the knife. So I think what we'll do is we'll end up using this one um, for some experimentation and to um, you know maybe do some things I wouldn't do with a knife that uh, you know I would consider a good knife. So uh, we'll see how good our heat treatment is with that one. So stay tuned. Now it's going. What we're going to do is just put a finished edge on these and clean up all this carbon on it and uh, get these things ready for a handle. All right, so now that we've got our scales cut, I went ahead and just, um, just so you know to catch you up, I've cut some slabs of cherry wood and uh, went ahead and cut them on my bandsaw. And I've also dressed the upper part of that so that those two have the same um, angles. They're a little hard to cut once the knife handle is on. So I try to um, bevel those edges just a little bit before I actually um, adhere it to the knife. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on these. Um, first thing we'll do is we've got some uh, brass pins. And so we'll get our epoxy warmed up a little bit because it's cool. But i got a nice fire going over there in the stove. And so we'll get that stuff warmed up. We'll mix up some epoxy and then we'll uh, put those scales on the knives. Now that we've got the handles glued up, it's time to start shaping them.
Okay guys, so we've got a rough grind on it. The darkened areas are just where I've left it on the belt just a little too long and it just burns a little bit, which is no big deal at this stage simply because we're gonna be finished sanding it now. So I've got an 80 grit on. I started with a 40, now I've got an 80. I'll bump up to 120 here shortly and I'll slowly refine that down. Um, and then I'll, I'll get the hand sanding it just to get uh, the smooth feel that I want. But um, you can tell, even with 40 grit, it gets it pretty doggone close to what we need. Okay guys, so at this point we've got, we've sanded down to 220. So now what we'll do is we'll put a finish edge on these blades and uh, we'll do that with the stone and then we'll put an oil finish, uh, a little bit of uh, cherry stain and an oil finish on this. a little bit of acetone now you can use a brush however you want to apply the stain I find that it's just easier for me to just kind of glob it on with a little piece of tissue of some sort Well, now that we've got the uh, knives finished, um, let me just walk you through what we've done here. So we've taken 80 CRV2 steel. We've put a cherry handle on it. So give you a look. The lighting is harsh in here, but I believe they look better than even on camera. 100 year old brass pins. These are from an old piano. So any little imperfections that uh, are on my knives is, um, something i don't mind leaving i kind of like it. and of course the carbon on the knife blade is something that i don't mind at all i'll get a little close-up of this see if there you go get a little look at that i just think it's pretty so i leave it so the wood is cherry wood <clears throat> and as i said these are brass pins i've uh put a red oak stain on them and then i put three or four coats of uh, boiled linseed oil on the um, handles after that. So there you have it guys. It's got three edges so it's ground. I think you could probably see it better here. It's ground from here to here and here to here and then right on that edge is where I take the stone and I hone just the edge on both knives to give them a near razor sharp finish. I try not to get too carried away, <clears throat> make it too sharp, but, uh, and uh, I've got another knife that I'm gonna end up doing some testing on, and uh, we'll see what it can take. Well guys, that's the end of this knife build. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hammer that like button, share it, subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment all you'd like. I know I'm not the greatest of editors, and I'm certainly not the greatest knife maker, um, but I'm, I'm learning every time I make new knives um, how to do it just a little bit better. I hope you've learned a little something from this. If nothing else, then it's been somewhat entertaining for you. Again, I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. We'll see you, God willing, on the next video.